changes. Hello Titan Brigade, this is Dinosaur D123 here coming at you with another video. So we're going to be looking at the patch notes for this upcoming update that were released today. Uh, the update's dropping on the 30th. It's going to be including Monarch, a new map, and a bunch of changes. Uh, I'm really excited for uh, all the changes that this patch is bringing. Really um, impressed with some of the changes they're making. And we're just going to be going through the list of updates. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on it and let you guys know what I think. So uh, first off on the list we have Relic. Uh, this uh, old Titanfall 1 map. This was personally one of my favorites on Titanfall 1. A lot of fun for Attrition and Last Titan Standing. A very competitive match to play on. Really looking forward to playing Last Titan Standing on it. I think it's going to be a lot better than Colony when it comes to bringing it into Titanfall 2. Because I don't think Phase Shift or um, certain Titans are going to ruin the way that the map is played. Uh, so I think it can be played very similar to Titanfall 1, which I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, next off, Monarch. We're getting Monarch on the 30th. Yes. Just yes. I'm, I'm really excited to be seeing Monarch in this game. Monarch is just going to be absolutely incredible. I don't think it's going to be overpowered. I think it's going to be really good for team play. It's not going to be overpowered, but it w I think it will be game-changing for the teams that use it properly. So... Last Titan Standing, Attrition, Skirmish, all of these modes are going to be played quite differently in terms of Titan play with Monarch on the field. Monarch is going to be that Titan to kill before Monarch gets to do too much uh, of its role. The sooner Monarch is taken out of play, the better for the enemy team. Because Monarch is going to be very underpowered when... It, when first dropped on the map, but it, it, after getting one or two cores, watch out because Monarch is going to go on a tear afterwards, either with an aggressive build that you put with your uh, core set or a more supportive role, Monarch is going to be a threat to be dealt with. And so Monarch players are going to need to watch out because they... They are and should be hunted down by the enemy if the enemy wants to be successful. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Monarch changes the meta and changes the playstyle for all these uh, modes. I think it's going to be really good in Titan Brawl 2, which also Titan Brawl is coming back uh, on Tuesday. Uh, I don't think it's going to be permanent yet, but that is still up in the air. Monarch can definitely reign supreme there uh, because... Uh, if you play properly, you can go for that third or fourth core and really benefit from Monarch there, unlike any other mode, because you will you can get every benefit possible from it. So, really excited to see that. Uh, the new Cloak execution is coming out. I don't really love the new Termination. It's okay. Um... It could be better. I still think Curb Stomp uh, looks a lot better in my opinion. But I'm not much wanting for pilot executions anyways. But for you new pilots there who really love executions, definitely unlock it and check it out. I think you guys will have some fun with that. Uh, new call signs and banners and all of that. More cosmetics. Uh, Prime Titans Tone and Ronin are coming. I, I really want Ronin Prime. I, I've I've heard a lot of uh, negativity towards the uh, Ronin Termination. I think it looks pretty cool. It could have been better, but it still looks nice. And I'm excited to have it. I think both Ronin and Tone Prime look really great. Uh, very well designed. Um, and I like. I really like Tone's uh, Termination as well. Those look pretty cool. Uh, we're going to get more camos, more call signs and patches. New nose arts. Hopefully they'll fix the bug nose arts in the game so that we can finally get them, such as the, like the ad kick gift nose arts and uh, bullseye camo. Hopefully they'll fix that for everything so that everyone can finally have what it already says is in the game because I really don't think they exist yet for a lot of players. Um, Going to be working on the matchmaking system so that you can invite friends to the network. Uh, 
confirm dialogue uh, when inviting a friend to the network. That'll be nice. Uh, so overall network improvements, those are always nice, always loved. Fixing crash site. Yay. I, I, I've always heard nothing but complaints about crash site is a terrible map. And that's because it's terrible for pilots. It was always pretty good for last sight and standing, but when it comes to being a pilot, Crash Sight sucks. And I'm really happy to see that map being fixed. It's going to be interesting seeing eight zip lines for pilots to zip around on. Uh, tons of tons more mobility. Pilots are going to be great. Really looking forward to that. Uh, so into the Titan balances, which is where I get really excited. So Titan Meter and Core Meter are now gained when damaging shielded Titans. This will keep Monarch's shielding ability from being overpowered. This will keep that in check. So you're not you're going to be able to farm Core off of the overshields that people are getting, and it also makes punishing batteries much easier. Slightly reduce core meter generation from damage to compensate for this. So you're going to gain core slower. It's probably going to be like 10 to 20% or 10 to 30% slower than normal, similar to the last nerf. That could mean a lot. Um, especially for Ronin players, like a lot of people hate on Ronin lately. Ronin is going to be hit harder by this core percentage change harder than any Titan. Because Ronin relies on his core to be successful, and Ronin has to be in dangerous engagements to get his core in the first place. So that tank DPS playstyle for Ronin is going to be much harder to achieve and to play correctly and successfully than it was. With the last core percentage change, it was very hard to adjust to that proper playstyle. Ronin's were really out of place. And Ronin's always struggled. Now the, the change affects everybody. But Ronin has the strongest core in the game. And Ronin really only excels when that core comes into play. Before the core, Ronin is either losing or trading engagements. So this could really affect uh, how easily Ronin is successful in public games. And the skill gap for Ronin will increase. Uh, but it's a great change. Don't get me wrong. I'm really happy that this change is happening. Uh, cores shouldn't be so readily available. Monarch is going to be shielding Titans and it's going to make survivability much easier. So it, it, they're going to even out. I think it's a great change in terms of Titan gameplay. And Titan executions are no longer blocked by shields. Again, another indirect nerf to Ronin. This is going to affect Ronin more than anybody else. Again, like I said, because for example, Ronin could Ronin will no longer be able to s safely use Sword Core when doomed. Before Ronin would get doomed and have its core ready, and all you had to do grab a battery, and then your core is much easier to use. That's not the case anymore. They can melee right through it and rip you, so you're still going to be one shot after you use your core. That could be a big problem for a lot of Ronin players. Ronin's not going to be like this all-powerful god on the field. He's going to be defeatable for many people. Um, I don't think that Ronin was this unbeatable god before other than in 1v1s previously, but in team play, Ronin's life just got harder, and I think that's going to make a lot of people happy, and I think it was necessary. It's not the only ch change they could have decided to make, but it definitely will get the job done in terms of balancing the game. Uh, and again, that does affect everybody, but Ronin... Those last two changes, I think, were mostly catered towards evening out Ronin because, again, Ronin relies on core to be successful, and you better get you're gonna need to get your core before your doom to benefit highly from uh to benefit highly from sword core because overshields will no longer save you, and this will also make the Highlander build harder to be viable because even though the Highlander build has so much potential because you're, it's going to be hard to get your core before you're low on health. Now on to Ion. I could not be more happy to see Ion nerfed. I don't think Ion is nerfed into the ground, but that poke and play, laser play style, that cheesy double tap RB and disappear, that bullshit's gone. 
Bro, Ion has been nerfed. That playstyle is dead. Hallelujah. That needed to happen. So, laser shots now cost more energy, so you can't double tap. Laser shots will do more damage. I'm guessing they'll be similar to an arc wave and do around a, a thousand, give or take. And the laser core is not as strong, so the Grand Cannon build will no longer be as powerful. Laser core won't be as powerful. You can't double tap lasers, and your laser is weaker and will use more energy. So this means you're, I think that Ion Refraction Lens or Ion Entangled Energy and focusing on Splitter Rifle damage will become the meta, which I'm really looking forward to. I feel like that's how Ion should have been played from the get-go. I don't think Ion ever should have been a re replacement for North Star. And this will in, uh, indirectly buff North Star for team gameplay. Because now Ion doesn't replace North Star in his role. North Star will now belong as the Sniper Titan. Kinda how it should have been, wouldn't you think? So, fantastic Ion got nerfed. Uh, Refraction Lens was already better DPS in its niche than Laser Shots were. But... Now Ion's, Ion's damage in all areas will go down because you're not it's not this all around anywhere on the map you're destroying people from any range with burst damage and poking. So now it's going to be a lot more uh, splitter rifle DPS and laser which is nice and Ion can still anchor no differently than before so Ion is still the best anchor still the best defender with that vortex shield and has a lot of uptime on his defenses. Ion is still very well rounded it's just not going to be the team sniper. As it shouldn't be. I, I feel that very strongly. Ion was never meant to be the team sniper. That that was not how it should have been. Uh, so there's a new... Uh, moving on, there's a new pilot tier 2 kit. Uh, Titan Hunter. Uh, killing a Titan will give you 10% bonus to your Titan meter. Uh, I'm curious as to whether or not this also includes core build time for your titan so maybe if this does apply to core build time this could be better than low profile and lts so for example if it does work for core build time if you kill a titan you'll get 10 percent of your core instead of not benefiting at all other than getting the kill so this could be better than low profile because you'll get your cores more often if it only applies to uh the core build meter or the titan building meter then it won't apply to LTS at all. Uh, we'll we'll have to see once it comes out. We'll be doing testing on that. Uh, the Volt is getting a near damage ner uh, buff. And it's getting a small view kick. This is nice. So the Volt might be viable again. And it's not going to have no recoil to counteract the fact that it will be doing adequate damage. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy with that. The Flatline and it's silly RNG recoil that it has won't be nearly as powerful it's getting a nerf so now it's going to be more on par with other assault rifles and it hopefully won't be so overused and so powerful i don't think it needed the last buff to be honest um next we have the r201 and the r101 Getting a damage buff at very long ranges. This will make it better for goosing pilots, I'm sure. Uh, I guess that's an okay change. I don't know if it was necessary. Because the R201 was already very good. But hey, I, I, guess it, I guess we'll have to see how it ends up affecting the game. The Devotion just keeps getting nerfed. And it hasn't been nerfed enough, I feel. So, Devotion is getting another nerf. And it should now be better than Spitfire when at the fastest fire rates. The Amp DMR is no longer a one-shot kill unless you get a headshot, so that could be pretty heavy to DMRs. I don't think they should have nerfed the DMR before the G2, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Hoping for the best with that. And again, so the P2 2016, that was nerfed at, uh, got a damage reduction nerf, and I think it was buffed at very long ranges. Uh... Oh, very far damage value added. So I'm confused about that. I think that's saying that like it, it'll do weaker at long range, but it kind of sounds backwards. But so they nerfed the P2016. I don't understand why they nerfed the Pocket G2 and not the actual G2. I, I 
think that the G2 needs a uh, fire rate nerf. The, the thing is absurd. It makes me not want to play pilot modes. Uh, attack kills being nerfed, so I think attack kill will still be the perk to use on your weapons. It just won't be as good, which can indirectly nerf phase shift so that you're not getting a phase every kill. Um, and so they're fixing things with melee. Hopefully this makes melee more consistent. Uh, again, well, that's something that we'll have to see if melee is ever actually fixed. Something that a lot of games seem to struggle with. But so, uh, melee is supposed to be more consistent, it seems like. Uh, game mode adjustments. So preventing phase shift players from earning meter by uh, phase dropping the flag and then picking it up. So that will help with CTF. People abusing people were probably abusing that in CTF. That's no longer a problem. Uh, private matches will no longer display win loss messages as those are not tracked in private matches. I kind of don't think that was necessary. People kind of already knew that was a private match, but uh, okay. And I'm really happy about this next change. You can now skip the kill replay in Live Fire and Last Sight and Standing. So you're not forced to watch your kill cam if you're trying to hurry up and get that overview sight for your teammates. This will really help in comp play. And it's a nice quality of life change if nothing else. So you don't have to watch that kill cam. You're, if you already knew how you died and you don't really care, well then now you can hurry up and get back to focusing on the game at hand that you're away from for five seconds. You're dead, but at least then you could be seeing what's going on instead of watching you die for a second time. So... Nice quality of life change, glad that's here. Kind of feel like that should have been a thing before, but late, better late than never. Um, players dying inside the Titan will no longer award pilot assists. This does not sound like a big deal, but it does make a difference, especially in Titan play and last Titan standing. So, the reason this matters, you've never, you never got, in last Titan standing, you never got core percentage from killing pilots. However, getting pilot assists uh, when you killing it when killing a titan. So if a friendly kills a titan for you and kills the pilot inside with it, every player that attacked that titan, other than the one that finished him, got five percent core from the pilot assist. So titans were you were getting free core percentage meter without getting like from your partners getting kills. This will rem remove that five percent team core percentage that you're getting. So uh, this will make cores slightly slower to obtain in LTS, even though it won't be highly noticeable. That 5% does end up making a difference, especially when it happens multiple times per round per player. So this will remove that uh, problem. I don't think it was intentional, and I think they just kind of overlooked that. So that that fix w will come with this. Again, doesn't it doesn't sound like a big thing like, oh, pilot assists don't count. Well, you it, it does matter when you consider that you're getting core percentage from pilot assists. Um, <laughs> pilots no longer considered idle and being kicked while rodeoing. This is good. I was actually in a game yesterday with a friend who kept going auto-titan and he kept getting kicked like four or five games in a row. So it's nice to see that being fixed just so those people who want to rodeo aren't being punished for it and removed from the game. Uh... Pilots are no longer getting stuck after grappling out of a rodeo near a ceiling, so yay, they're fixing things with grapple, fixing these bugs, better quality of life changes. Those are always highly appreciated. Uh, fix things with the store, so that things won't show as purchasable after buying them. That's good. Uh, fix issues with open invites, not showing the correct icon for joined players, and fix several rare crash issues. Again, nice quality of life changes. Happy they're happening. So, all in all, the things I'm most excited about this Tuesday with the update is I get to play Titan Brawl for however long it's out, whether it's a week or whether it's permanent. I'm super excited to play Titan Brawl. It's by far my favorite mode in this game, or really in any game ever. Titan Brawl is just wonderful, and I could not be more happy to play it. Um, afterwards, I'm really happy about Monarch. Look, looking forward to testing and learning all the mechanics for it and playing the Titan. Monarch's going to be a great addition to the game. Uh, and also excited for Relic. As I said before, it was my one of my favorite Titanfall 1 maps, and I'm happy to have it back. 
I think it's going to be a good addition to the game as well. And then fixing Crash Site is also nice. And then three balances are wonderful. Uh, the only complaint I have for this patch is that they didn't uh, is that they didn't have as many rebalances as I was hoping. I wish they would have buffed the uh, three shot burst kit for Tone so that the forty mil could be viable uh, for actual like realistic damage output. I don't think that your fire rate should be nerfed by running burst loader when shooting semi auto. And I wish that Scorch would have got a buff because his primary is far too inconsistent and Flame Wall does not really deny areas as in, as intended. It doesn't do nearly enough for that. So I, I just wish they would have did more Titan rebalancing and then nerf the damn G2 because I, I, I'm sick of that weapon. But all in all, great patch. Again, the only complaint is that there wasn't as many patches as I was hoping for, but Really happy about everything. Looking forward to Tuesday. I'll be playing Titan Brawl a ton next week. I'll probably be doing a 24-hour stream just so I have an excuse to play Titan Brawl for 24 hours. And so, really looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think about the patch in the comment section. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Working on the uh, Legion's Mechanics Guide uh, up next, so be watching for that soon. Take care, guys.